Right, okay, so we're going to look at unit six today, year 10. Do you want to turn around and face so you can see what I'm saying? That's it. Can you just have quickly, out of all of you, who's started unit six leading a sports event already in BTEC Sport? No, that's fine, that's good, that's good. Okay, so, introductions to this unit. Learning uh, aim A, you need to know the attributes associated with a successful sports leader. So what you're going to do is gain an understanding of different sports leaders and what they need to do to be successful at that job. Okay, you can choose a PE teacher, you can choose two PE teachers, you can choose a premiership football manager, if you go to dance you can choose your dance teacher, but you need to make sure that you know as a leader what attributes they need to be to be successful. You will then plan your own session, okay, and you will then teach that session to potentially a group of year sevens. Within that lesson plan, you need to make sure that you're doing a risk assessment, you've got equipment list, that type of thing. And then, learning aim C, you need to review that planning. So you're going to evaluate yourself and how, it's, how, how you think it went. Okay, so not how you um, took part in the lesson, actually how you taught that lesson, what were your strengths, what could you do to improve. This is a really good unit for those of you that perhaps when you leave school are thinking of maybe going into teaching or something like that. Okay, so I'm just going to go into a little bit more um, detail on each unit and then obviously I would like you to, to make a start. Obviously you understand P1, P2, M1, M2 and D1 okay, because of the other units that you've completed. So remember that P stands for pass, that's equivalent to a 4-5. Merit, M stands for merit, equivalent to a 6-7, and then uh, D is distinction, equivalent to around about a 7-8 or 9, okay? So, you need to understand that the pass criteria is kind of your basic, that's your description. What makes a successful sports leader? What responsibilities do they need to have, okay? And the merit is you explaining that in a little bit more detail. So you've listed what attributes those people, those successful sports leaders need, and then to look at achieving the merits, you need to go into a lot more detail about what, what it, those attributes are and why they need them. For the distinction part, you need to compare and contrast. So you perhaps could pick me as your PE teacher and then compare me to a premiership football manager. We're obviously going to have quite a lot of differences, okay? Especially one being they're paid millions of pounds every year. Hiya. I'm sorry to interrupt. Is, it, is Connor in it? Connor Ash? No, but he might be next door. Okay, so the different attributes that a sports leader needs are these that are listed on the board. When it comes to your first piece of coursework for this unit, you are going to need to explain what each of these are. Appearance, communication, organisation of equipment, activity structure, evaluation, qualities, use of language. Okay? Now, just to give you an example, knowledge. As a PE teacher, I need to have lots of knowledge about lots of different sports. It might not be that in depth, but I need to know the rules, the regulations, how to play the game, what skills they need. Whereas perhaps somebody like a premiership football manager, the knowledge that they have is so much more detailed, so they might need to know the fitness behind it, the fitness training methods that they need to use, all of those types of things. So you need to really start to think about, make sure you know what sports leaders you're going to pick so that you can explain who and what they are. Okay? Then, different responsibilities as sports leaders that we all need. So you will need to explain what all of these are, professional conduct, health and safety, equality, insurance, child protection, legal obligations, ethics and values and rules and regulations. Again, you're listing, you're explaining what they are, so you're saying what they are, and then why we need them. Why do, as a teacher, do I need to behave professionally? Is it appropriate for me to come in every morning and swear at you in your lesson? No, it's not very professional. Okay, so it's about why, as leaders, we take on board all of these things. Okay, so your first task when I've gone through the introduction is 
You are going to describe the attributes of a sports leader. You pick your own sports leader. So I want you now to think about, for about 30 seconds, 30 seconds, who you are going to pick and make sure that you know who they are, what sport perhaps they do. Don't just pick somebody random because you're going to be spending a lot of time looking into this person. Like I said, you could choose your PE teacher. I'm absolutely happy for you to do that. Okay, but make sure you know and you can talk about who that person is and what they do. Obviously, you saw on the previous slide, the attributes are already there. You just need to make sure that you're describing what each of those mean. On the OneDrive, there is examples of what these look like. Okay, you do the same then for the responsibility. And then this is when you then compare and contrast two sports leaders. So we've already talked about the attributes and responsibilities. This is when you pick two leaders. Little tip, try and do opposites. That's why I use the example of a PE teacher and a premiership footballer, because, premiership football manager, because we're completely different, poles apart. All right? That would be my suggestion for you. So for example, this person here was used Arsene Wenger and Gareth Southgate. Okay, Arsene Wenger was the manager of Arsenal Football Club, Gareth Southgate is the manager of England. So even though they're the same sport, still lots of differences. One sees their, their team day in, day out. The other one only sees their players at particular points throughout the season. Assignment two. Plan two selected sports activities. You can do this in pairs, in groups, or on your own. Okay, obviously in the situation that we are now, it probably is easier for you to plan this independently, but I've got nothing against if you want to set up like a little Zoom chat or WhatsApp video call for you to plan your sessions together. You need to do two lesson plans. Okay, you can pick any sport. You could even do something like an old fashioned sports day. Okay, but you've got to think about the year group that you're going to be teaching and you've got to think about what they're going to enjoy. You will then lead that, you'll lead that sports session. That's something that will happen when we obviously come back into school. You need to justify, so tell me why you've picked the activities that you have wanted to do within your lesson plan. Um, so for example, if you've chosen to do rounders and you're working on batting, Okay, in the first half of your lesson, why have you picked those particular practices? And then obviously, uh, you lead your successful sports event independently. So with no help from any members of staff, we're just there to kind of evaluate you and make sure that you're, that you're doing it. Then, assignment three, the last criteria is basically your evaluation. You're reviewing your planning and leading. So how well did the planning go and how well did the leading go? My suggestion would be that in the planning session, you put together a questionnaire so that you can then give that to your year seven students and you can say to them, what did you enjoy about that session? What do you think we could do to improve? So you've got some other feedback coming in from some year seven students. You will do a personal development plan. So what targets, if you were to teach that lesson again, what targets would you set yourself? And how could you reach those targets for the next time you were to teach it? And obviously the distinction part is to justify those targets.